Hey everyone, Evan here, and welcome to Baritone Studios. In this video, I'll be going over the relationships between all the operators in Rainbow Six Siege, from the Pathfinders all the way to the newest operator, Grim. This is an exciting chart that I've been researching for a very long time now, and I haven't seen anything like it with as much detail as mine. So go ahead, sit back, grab your box of Thin Mints, and enjoy. Before we start, a little bit of a preface. I compiled all my information from operator bios, cinematics, animated shorts, comics, really anything I could find that specifically mentions or highly suggests these relationships. I will be ignoring the fact that most of these operators have worked or interacted with each other at least once in a professional setting. I'm not doing who's worked with who or what gadgets work well together. I'm doing whether or not an operator likes another based on specific experiences they've both had. With that being said, first up, we have Sledge. It's stated in his bio that Sledge views his fellow operators as family, specifically Thatcher, who he considers to be one of his closest friends. Next up, we have Thatcher. Within his psychological report, Perry states that Thatcher's tolerance of mute is surprising, as Thatcher is usually impatient with youthful energy. However, Thatcher would later go on to state in a rather envious way that, quote, mute is a clever kid. On Harry's operator board, we can see that Thatcher and Ash share a battlefield respect for one another. Partially hidden behind Harry's head, the word drink can also be found on Thatcher's connection to Castle. Now I'm going to go out on a limb here, but I'm pretty sure that the two are drinking buddies. So either way, Harry has him as a positive relationship. Next up is Smoke. In his bio, we learn that Smoke and Thatcher teamed up with Legion for Legion's first mission. Operation Green Viper. When the mission was successfully completed, the three celebrate by spending an extra day in Macau as a short vacation, which solidified their friendship. Next, we have Mute. Within Harry's psychological report of him, Harry states that he's noticed Mute hanging around Glass a lot. Harry believes this is because Mute also likes deconstructing equipment to create something in a new abstract light, just as Glass views art abstractly. After Mute, we have Castle, who, according to Harry's board, is friendly with Doc and his professional colleagues with Blitz. Next up, we have Ash. Within Ash's bio and psychological report, we find out that Ash met Castle during her time at the FBI SWAT, where the two became very close friends. Also in her bio, during Ash's time in Buenos Aires, Argentina, Ash stumbled upon Flores. Ash would offer Flores asylum in the U.S. in exchange for information. She would later encourage him to join Team Rainbow. On Harry's board, it can be seen that Ash also has a positive connection with Thermite, reading sibling-type relationship. After Harry recruited Nighthaven into Rainbow, Ash instantly held a grudge against Callie and Wamai, as the operatives of Nighthaven were unknown and their actions were against what Rainbow usually stood for. We do not use people as bait here! <laughs> At one point, Ash would even tell Harry that she thought he made a mistake. Next up, we have Thermite. As we learn through his bio, Thermite spent four years as a field operative in the FBI's Hazardous Materials Response Unit, where he eventually met Aruni, who was affiliated with the Royal Thai Police Department. It was during an operation in Bangkok that Thermite was trying to defuse a bomb in the bed of a moving pickup truck, and Aruni was driving, when the pickup had a head-on collision. The explosion resulted in Aruni losing her left arm and leg, while Thermite only suffered third-degree burns to his hands and arms. Though both eventually recovered, Thermite always felt responsible for Aruni's injuries since he didn't defuse the bomb in time. However, after Aruni had been recruited into Rainbow and arrived to the stadium for training in 2020, she told Thermite that she never once blamed him for her injuries, patching up any of Thermite's worries. Once Thermite joined Rainbow himself in 2015, he started working in research and development, helping to create Hibana's ex Carlos exothermic gadget that eventually led to the two of them becoming close friends. During Harry's psychological report, we also learned that Thermite is, quote, quite the social butterfly in his downtime, end quote, having close relationships with Thatcher and Twitch as well. After Thermite, we have Pulse. Within Harry's psychological report of Pulse, we learn that Thermite and Pulse are close. In fact, Thermite, Pulse, and Habana are all close as a group of three. 
with a picture of them being found on the map border. We also find out Pulse has a professional rivalry with IQ, where the two seem to enjoy challenging each other. Next up, we have Twitch. In Twitch's bio and on Harry's board, we learn that prior to her joining Rainbow, she went on a 2015 mission in Nigeria to assist in the fight against Ebola. Working with Doc, under Lion's guide, Lion would make several hard choices regarding quarantine procedures that led to the death of several medical personnel, including a friend of Doc's. This would lead to Twitch and Doc blaming Lion for their deaths, resulting in Twitch and Doc forming a positive relationship based upon their mutual respect for life, and Twitch and Doc forming a descent for Lion. Shortly after joining Rainbow, Twitch would meet Caviera and have, quote, some kind of relationship, but to what extent remains currently unknown. After Caviera went AWOL in Bolivia in 2019, Twitch and Valkyrie worked together to bring Caviera back, leading me to believe that Twitch had a close enough relationship with Caviera to go in and recover her from Bolivia. Next is Montaigne. Shortly after the reorganization of Rainbow, Montaigne trained extensively with Lion and Sens in preparation for Operation Vector Glare, leading to the three of them becoming a close-knit squad. After Montaigne, we have Doc. On Harry's board, we learn that Doc and Dokabi have a positive relationship based on mutual optimism. We also see that despite their different methods of solving problems, he and Ash both share a mutual respect for one another. And while not many know about Finca's neuropathy coming back, Doc is one of the few who do and secretly monitors her to make sure it doesn't affect her work both physically and mentally. Next up is Rook. In his bio, we learn that Rook and Twitch were in Paris together when several large fires emerged in the downtown area. The two worked together to help contain the chaos, but having experienced something similar during their program training, they suspected the fires were merely a distraction. They ended up tracking down the robbers who were robbing several banks across the city. After confronting the robbers, Rook was shot in the head, but was saved by his helmet. Twitch quickly helped Rook get up and regroup before the pair pursued the robbers through Paris in a high-speed motorcycle chase, eventually catching them. That sounds like the start of a James Bond movie to me. I can't see anything other than positivity out of this one. Next up, we have Glass. Within his psychological report, we learn that Glass is very tolerant of personality extremes and strategies so he works very well with Capital. There is a running joke where Tachanka tells Glass it's because he almost lost his eye too, which makes Glass laugh. Glass has a scar on his right eye from a weapon kick, although his laugh makes Harry think that there's more to the story. Next up is Fuse. Within Harry's psychological report, he observes that Fuse is quiet with almost every specialist, except Glass. Also on Harry's board, we see that Fuse has a positive relationship with Ash, prompted by, quote, exchange of technical expertise. Next, we have Capcan. During a psychological report of Malusi by Capcan, he admits to having common principles with her, stating that he, quote, admires her commitment to conservation in her anti-poaching unit, end quote. He doesn't see her being taken by surprise very often, and thus would like to see it happen when it does. Next, we have Tachanka. On Harry's board, we see that he has given a positive relationship between Ash, with a note stating, grudging respect. Through Finca's bio, we also learn that Tachanka likes to drink and flirt with Finca very often. Next, we have Blitz. Within Harry's psychological report of Blitz, Harry believes that Blitz's close friendship with Montaigne is a way for Blitz to expand his application of abilities as well as a way for both of them to be competitive. Harry also notices that Blitz is very close with Finca, who when asked about it, Blitz says they simply enjoy making fun of each other and that she impresses him. Harry wonders if it is because he feels guilty he's in perfect health or that he may have higher feelings for her. Next, after Blitz, we have Bandit. Bandit isn't really friends or enemies of anyone. Kind of lame. Boo! 
Next, we have Buck. During a device evaluation of Buck's skeleton key by Frost, we learn that Frost and Buck don't play pool together because Frost knows that Buck likes to find the shortest distance between two points. They went head to head in another competition on opening up a wall with his skeleton key and Frost of course lost. But she would then book extra time at the range so she could improve and challenge him again. Sounds pretty positive to me. Next up, we have Frost. Within Harry's psychological report of her, we learn that Frost had a bad hunting accident. And when Harry tried to bring it up, she is reluctant to speak and feels shame about the incident. Instead of pushing the subject away, Harry introduces her to Nomad, and the two become instant friends with their shared love and deep connection to the outdoors. Next, we have Blackbeard. Within Vigil's bio, we learn that Blackbeard met and trained Vigil alongside other Navy SEALs in 2017. For some unknown reason, this has led to Blackbeard being the only operator that Vigil is able to confide himself in. Next up, we have Valkyrie. Within Valkyrie's bio, we find out that when Valkyrie underwent Navy SEAL training during Hell Week, Blackbeard was one of her instructors. Despite this, she respects him, but does not have any warm feelings with him either. After joining Rainbow, Valkyrie worked with Twitch to help locate Caviera and Bolivia during Operation Archangel. Despite the mission being successful, the mission caused tension between the two. During Harry's psychological report of Valkyrie, we find out that Valkyrie is training to obtain her helicopter license thanks to some inspiration from Mira. Valkyrie is also taking language classes thanks to the encouragement from Habana and Castle. Next up, we have Capital. According to Harry's board, we see that there is a negative relationship between Capital and Caviera. It has a note that says, dislike, and is probably connected to the fact that Caviera is very brutal and likes torturing people for information when Capitao did have an experience of being tortured and losing his left eye prior to joining Rainbow. Next, we have Habana. Sometime after joining Rainbow, we learn through Habana's bio that she starts a secret relationship with Pulse. This is also later confirmed during the 2026 Invitational when Habana lands the winning shot on Pulse, but not before saying, Sorry, babe. Attackers win! Habana also looks up to Thatcher as a mentor figure, as can be found on Harry's board. However, there's also some sibling type impatience between her and Dokabi, causing some tension at times. Next up is Echo. In Echo's bio, we find out that Echo collaborated with the Hong Kong Special Duties Unit prior to joining Rainbow, where he met Ying. The two then started a relationship not long after, before eventually breaking up a year later. In Ying's device evaluation, Twitch does state, though, that the two have friendly conversations, suggesting that they're on good terms with each other. Back in Echo's bio, we also learn that Echo is close with Caviera, as Echo appreciates Cav's bluntness and also believes that, quote, people who are offended simply just don't get the joke. Echo is also friends with Dokabi, as the two get very competitive and try to outdo each other within the gadget workshop. During Echo's device evaluation, Pulse joins him and the group has this playful conversation. Evaluation lead, Specialist Echo with Specialist Pulse. Because he wouldn't leave me alone. Say two words, transmit pulses, and he's all over you like a dirty shirt. Also, explain to me the obsession with learning Japanese. Can a guy just want to be a better guy? If a guy wants to be a better guy, he can try being a man. Ouch, bro. Can you two comedians please make sure these comments are clear before Harry sees the files? Too late. Seriously, though, nothing to worry about. I'm also working late nights in a state of the art lab, but since the cafeteria started including Katsudon, I think Mira doesn't want me to go home at all. Evaluation of the yokai went well. Results are attached. I'd like to conduct further tests on electroacoustic transducer frequency. Maybe I can coordinate lab time when Pulse isn't here. And I thought we were buds.
After Echo, we have Jackal. In his bio after joining Rainbow in 2017, Jackal grew close with many other operatives. The first being Mira, after he started working in the research and development division with her, prompting the two to have a deep respect for one another. Other close relationships, according to Harry's psychological report, include Thatcher, Twitch, and Lionel. Next up is Mira. Within her bio and on Harry's board, during Operation Blue on Ryan, Mira was forced to create a panic room while at the Embassy of Spain in Tel Aviv, which led to the invention of her Black Mirror gadget. However, this created tension with Ash, the start of a long rivalry between what Harry calls, quote, a clash of two strong-willed people, end quote, within Mira's psychological report. Once Callie joined Rainbow, Mira wanted to do a de detailed device evaluation on Callie's explosive lance. However, Callie would make it difficult for Mira to inspect her device. It even got to the point that Callie's lawyers made sure Mira would not look at the technology. This led to tension between Mira and Callie, and eventually spreading to Osa as well after more Nighthaven members joined Rainbow and Mira was denied access to view their gadget. Next, we have Ying. According to Ying's bio, during Operation High Sun before joining Rainbow, Ying and Fuse got into an altercation after she called him, quote, a questionable asset, believing that he had no regard for civilian life following the use of his gadget during the operation. It was only resolved after Ash jumped in between the two. Speaking of Ash, on Harry's board, he has a connection between Ying and Ash that simply says, ally. Next up is Legion. In Legion's bio and psychological report, we find out that Legion was a first choice pick when the CBRN threat unit was created a year after he joined. He then started working very closely with Lion and Finca on state-of-the-art solutions to biological warfare of both the past and future. After Legion, we have Zofia. Almost immediately in her bio, we find out Zofia is the older sister of Ella. In the psychological report, we find out that Zofia's father favorited Zofia heavily over Ella. This started the divide between the two sisters even after they had joined Rainbow. Following the 2022 Six Invitational, Ella would leave Rainbow alongside Nighthaven. Ella! Father would be ashamed of you. Father died, Zofia. But you left me alone. Family drama. Next, we have Ella. Besides the trouble between the two sisters, prior to Ella's work in Rainbow, she went undercover with Valkyrie for many months during Operation Orange Sky to infiltrate a warlord's inner circle. It went so successfully that the warlord was taken down without a single civilian being hurt. Ella and Valkyrie stayed close friends after the operation. Next up, we have Dokubi. We received a lot of specific information about Dokubi from Harry's board. The first is that Dokubi has a misguided suspicion against Vigil, who if you know anything about, Dokubi thinks is tailing her from within Rainbow on the orders of her old unit's Major General. However, we find out that during Vigil's psychological report that this is not true. Next, we see a negative relationship with Ash stating that Dope is too young and Ash is too serious. This is similar to Thatcher's relationship with Dokubi due to their age difference. Some of this tension can be seen within the Hammer and Scalpel cinematic. Lastly, on Harry's board once again, we see that Dokubi believes Caviera is scary, leading to Dokubi not being able to stand her ground against her. Next, we have Vigil. Within the trivia section of Vigil's bio on the Rainbow Six Siege wiki, we learn that he has become a friendly target for Mute, who simply says that Vigil is too quiet. We also learn on Vigil's bio that he just hates Mozzie. Nobody knows why, but Vigil has even stated that he'll send Mozzie back to Australia in a box. <laughs> I hope Mozzie's not on my team, or he might experience it. 
accident. After Vigil, we have Lion. In Lion's psychological report from Harry, we learn that Lion said a few choice words during a training exercise that resulted in Thatcher punching him in the face. It almost brought the GIGN and SAS to blows, but was thankfully broken up. Next up, we have Finca. In her bio, we find out that when Finca tried out for the Spetnots, she had to take a CQB knife training with Capcan. After accidentally taking a misstep and slashing open Finca's face, Finca went in and broke Capcan's nose and ribs before her own pain overwhelmed her. They spent the night together in the med tent, not saying a word, but they both had an unspoken respect for one another, with Capcan even giving Finca her call sign because of the event. Next is Maestro. Within his psychological report from Harry, we learn that Maestro is very close to Sledge, to the point that when the two were on off-duty cycles from being deployed together on joint operations in Iraq, Maestro would invite Sledge over to visit his family together. According to Harry's board, we also see that Maestro and Thatcher have a positive relationship, with Maestro having admirations for Thatcher. Next up is Alibi. In her psychological report, we see that Alibi has worked extensively with Maestro, but Harry suspects that their relationship is closer than just having worked together. He can't tell if they're close friends, if they're familiar, or something else. But, quote, time will tell. After Alibi, we have Maverick. In his bio, after he joined Delta Force and was stationed in Kabul, he was investigating a mission reporter when Delta Force lost contact with him. After two years of radio silence, Maverick was discovered and saved by Nock, who helped him re-emerge with enough information to dismantle the entire insurgency operation he was investigating. Next, we have Clash. Within her psychological report, Harry is happy to see that she was able to quickly make friends with Montaigne as soon as she joined Rainbow, based on their competitive natures as well as their shared experiences of working security details. On Harry's board, we see that Clash and Thatcher have a negative relationship. We see that the two just really can't get along due to their political and occupational backgrounds. Harry even goes as far as to say that their two pots about to boil over. Next is Nomad. Almost immediately in her bio, we learn that Nomad was trained under Cade and highly respects him for teaching her to be as successful as she is. Before joining Rainbow, Nomad was injured during a Canadian wilderness expedition, being rescued and given medical treatment by Thunderbird. Thunderbird would also fend off a bear attack and fly both of them to safety after repairing her helicopter. The two would stay in contact, and Nomad would later recommend Thunderbird's recruitment into Rainbow, with the two staying close friends afterwards. On Harry's board, we also see that Nomad has a positive relationship with Thatcher, with the two having respect for one another and being new friends. Next up is Gridlock. In Gridlock's psychological report, we find out that Gridlock and Mozzie have a long history together, including meeting in high school at a Robot Wars competition, and then during Army training where the two haven't left each other's sides ever since. It's, uh, quiet here. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's like really, really, really was quiet. Quiet. Attention. Convoy entering the sector in five minutes. Next up, we have Nock. Shortly after the recruitment of Thunderbird into Rainbow, Nock was unconvinced that she was up for the team. So to test Thunderbird, not cut the hydraulic line for Thunderbird's helicopter landing gear, stole a necklace and stuck it in the helicopter, and then ambushed Thunderbird after she retrieved the necklace. Nock had lured Thunderbird there under the guise of Nobad, writing a note about the helicopter's problem. 
knock Van ambushed Thunderbird, shooting her in the leg, and then taunting her from the shadows with a nursery rhyme. Thunderbird would then release a smoke and flank knock, striking her in the head, ending the attack. Thunderbird would explain that she knew something was off because of the note. Nock apologized and said that she was sorry, that she just didn't trust Nomad's recruiting intuition. Thunderbird then said that she had no hard feelings and that the next time Nock was going to test her to leave her aircraft alone. So this is one of the only ones I really don't know how to classify. Um, Nock cut the landing gears hydraulics, lured Thunderbird into an ambush, shot Thunderbird, said she didn't trust Nomad's recommendation of Thunderbird's skills, and then Thunderbird just forgave her. So I'm just going to make a safe assumption and give them a mutual relationship. I think the moral of this story is that Nock just needs to learn how to make friends a different way. Next up, we have Warden. According to Mira's device evaluation of Warden's smart glasses, the guy just won't leave her the hell alone about getting different styles for his glasses. Mira would say, quote, he has been a nuisance. He keeps asking for different styles for his smart glasses, but I work on the lenses themselves. I don't do designer frames. After Warden, we have Amaru. Before her time on Rainbow, we learn through Amaru's bio that Amaru met a young Goyo after a bombing destroyed his home and killed his father and sister. Amaru would go on to teach Goyo how to survive on the streets and stay out of trouble. The two would then work together after joining Rainbow, staying friends. Remember this morning when we recovered the stolen artifacts? Those guys might have noticed me. Things got a little heated. Then there was that beautiful moment. Me making my escape. Enemies in hot pursuit. You taking that shot, covering my back, and giving me a boost. Que baja causa. But I, uh, lost my wallet and all the excitement. Don't worry. I got you. Ah, just kidding. <laughs> hey, Paya. It's on me. Next up is Wamai. In Wamai's bio, we learn that Wamai joined Nighthaven after Callie offered him more downtime and a private boat to be able to take him where his next dive site is. Since joining Rainbow and later leaving, Wamai has been supportive of Callie in all her decisions. Next up is Ayana. Ayana doesn't really have any friends within Rainbow. You could say she's almost out of this world to them. We paid nine dollars for this? I paid ten! Up next is Oryx. In Oryx's bio, we find out that he eventually showed up as a cadet at Kay's Fortress. Working his way from recruit to instructor, he now serves as the second in command behind Cade, acting as the head when Cade is away and acting as an advisor when the two are together. Next, we have Ace. In Ace's bio and Harry's psychological report, we find out that Ace was part of a joint UN operation in Somalia where he saved Callie's life. Afterwards, Ace was invited to join Nighthaven and has been loyal to her ever since, giving praise for her to everyone who asks. Next is Aruni. Within Harry's psychological report of Aruni, we learn that Aruni likes to travel all across the world. It mentions that she often travels with other people from companionship and security when visiting destabilized regions, including Twitch and Nomad. Next up is Flores. In Harry's psychological report of Flores, Harry has observed a friendship with Dokabi and Gridlock, often talking about technology and other things while eating meals together. After Flores, we have Osa. In Osa's bio, we find out that she was snooping around Rainbow's research and development lab when she was caught by Zero. When Osa claimed to be merely reviewing equipment, Zero called her a liar and said, if Callie thinks that she can, before getting cut off by Osa. Osa would say that he doesn't know Nighthaven and not to insult Callie. 
Also in Osa's animated trailer, we see her having a playful yet almost sibling relationship with Ace, using a picture of him as blackmail after he calls her a nerd. Debugging my staff and this goes viral. Oh, no, come on. Please don't tap Kali. Mm -hmm. Next, we have Thorn. In Thorn's bio and psychological profile, we learn that Thorn met Sledge after joining the Ireland National Police Service. After applying to the emergency response unit and helping redesign the unit's obstacle course, Caviar would find out and ask to recruit her after barely completing the training herself. Following being brought onto Rainbow, Thorn would invite Caviar and Sledge to train together on her family farm, where the three grew very close over their time in Ireland. After returning back to Greece, Thorn and Caviar would go sightseeing at the Parthenon and get caught up in the exchange of a stolen artifact. The two were then reprimanded by Zero for being arrested by local police and not keeping a low profile during the entire process. Next up is Azami. In the story of Azami animated video, we learn that Azami is somehow connected to Habana after breaking into Habana's apartment. Digging into Azami's bio, we then learn that Azami and Habana met after Azami joined the security police division of the IMPD, where the two often trained and sparred together. Next is Sens. During Mira's device evaluation of Sens ROU protection system, Mira admits that working with Sens on the device is the most fun that she has had in a while. Paired with Sens's eagerness with questions, suggestions, and insights, this allowed Mira to push the device way further than would have been possible otherwise. And last, we have the newest operator, Grim. Within Grim's bio, we learn that he is the first operator to not be a part of Rainbow. During Grim's reveal panel video, we also learn that he is an outsider to Nighthaven 2. This one was an interesting assignment for us because Grim is a very traditional grounded soldier who might not be seen as a member of Nighthaven at first sight. We see this traditional soldier like Grimm standing among all these uh, colorful operators, uh, which creates this interesting dynamic. And Grimm's supposed to be a little bit outcast, and he's, he needs to stand out a little bit. In 2022, Grimm and Smoke discovered an unconscious Nighthaven guard outside their headquarters. Several seconds later, gunshots and flashes could be seen above them in the server room. Once inside, Grimm was ambushed by Nock, who stabbed him in the leg. What is it with her leg injury? As Nock ran away, Grimm shot his hive launcher at her and put a tourniquet on his leg. After pursuing her, he was stunned to find out that his nanobots weren't able to track her. Grimm then slashed Nock's face veil before putting her in a chokehold. Grimm then threatened to kill her unless she gave up the stolen data key, but was swiftly cut off when she detonated a nearby nitro cell, allowing Nock to escape onto a small boat driven by Zero. And there we have it! That's the full Rainbow Six Siege Operator Relationship Chart. Except for one. I purposely left this operator out because I thought they were too different to just be thrown aside without any connections. The last operator is Jaeger. In Jaeger's psychological report, Harry explains, quote, Jaeger is not adept at reading social cues. Jaeger has a creative curiosity that's reflected both in his operations and his daily life. The first part of our conversation was spent discussing a documentary that he had watched the night before, about scientists searching for new antibiotics. Jaeger was so caught up in it that he sent the link to Doc, Twitch, and Finca. I'm sure they were all equally interested, but maybe not thrilled to be contacted so early in the morning. Jaeger's lively energy made for a dizzying meeting. Though the conversation wasn't erratic, it had a path, and I admit I wasn't able to see it until I noticed that he often mentions the team wondering if so-and-so is doing all right after the loss of their dog, if another one received the birthday card he sent, and so on. Jaeger enjoys sharing information so that he can make a connection. Not just his connection with individuals, but a web of connections among everyone. His own upbringing wasn't particularly lively or warm, and the small family meant that he had a very little company at a young age. 
understanding this background will shine some light on why Jaeger is so eager to create these connections with his team. It certainly explains how intensely protective he is of them, either on operations or during downtime. He sees them all as family. So thank you all for watching. If you did make it this far, it took a super long time to compile all the materials for this video. I researched everything as thoroughly as I could to ensure this web was as canonically accurate as possible. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to comment, like, and subscribe. Let me know if you enjoyed the content or if I missed something. Lastly, if you want to catch up on your Siege War or a different video games for that matter, make sure to check out our podcast, Multiplayer Vault. There we deep dive into the stories and lore of your favorite multiplayer video games. So once again, thank you all for watching. I'm Evan, and I'll catch you later.